The following is a Cheeky Leprechaun production. Pop culture is the entirety of ideas. I love it. It's me, Mario. Let the bass kick. I am the greatest. Holy eggshell. I am your father. In footy season, I don't know how they do it. Yeah. Him, yeah. Um, Eddie Maguire. How, like, how well, does Eddie, Eddie Maguire I reckon, do hates his family. So I think he, he yeah. he's easily, like, he does it a lot easier. That'll do it. Because he doesn't really care about I going heard, home. Did, I don't know if I told you this. I When I was working at Triple M, I heard that he, the way he gets up every day, because he gets asked by people flat out, apparently, like, how do you do it? He goes, as soon as my alarm goes off at 4am, my feet, I swing my feet out of the bed and put them on the ground. Yeah. And I'm up. Yeah. He's like, I don't think yeah. about it. Yeah. I don't have that moment where I set multiple alarms. I set one alarm yeah. and when that goes off I know my feet have to hit the ground. Yeah. That's just that is just Reminds me a bit yeah. of myself. It's work ethic. It, it reminds you of yourself. Yeah. You've always been an early to bed kind early of to guy. bed, early to rise. Yes. Yeah. But that's not that has never been like that look, that's never been like a something that I've planned like, you know, this is what the successful people do. Oh well you're an old man from a young age. Oh exactly right. Yeah. Well my mum has always maintained that ever since I got glandular fever in year ten <laughs> that I have never got rid of it. Like yeah. I've never I've from then on I had to go to bed at like nine, nine thirty. And not because I'm Do you reckon like, that was what did it? Well before then I wanted to stay up. I wanted to watch Blue Healers, you know, I wanted to yeah, do these things. Those but, classic <laughs> Aussie crime dramas. <laughs> I yeah. remember you when you got... We're obviously good mates at that point. Yeah. What was that year... N- I think it was year 10. I took a month off So you're about school. 16. Yeah. 16 yeah. was the peak time I reckon I was... <laughs> the dog's in here. He's barking. Look, there's somebody out the front, is there? Yeah. I'm going to need you to shut that dog up, mate. Hey. I like, I like dogs. Hey. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, year 10, 16 years old, I reckon was the peak time. Mate, bedtimes. They're out the window. Well, you were the opposite. I was the opposite. You were like, yeah, I stayed up watching David Letterman. And I was like, dude, that's on at 11.30. Mate, there was some nights that went on at 12. Yeah. And it still does, that late show. But I've always been... But actually, I should say, <laughs> I always had a part-time job, though, yeah. which was a night shift type, type of yeah. job. So I was working till midnight in high school. Mm. So I think, well, we had a different upbringing, Ben. Mm. That, well, is, that is true, because I didn't work at all. But I, no, you didn't. I, I waited for the holidays, and then I and then I'd work one or two weeks at my uncle's factory or another factory. You and, did, <laughs> and make that make the same amount of money that people made throughout. Yeah, but not gaining any skills or anything. No. Just not doing anything during school, and then having to make that money last for a whole term at school when we're when we're going out trying to buy alcohol and stuff. I, yeah, you're a liability for a long time. I, I still am. Some people would say it's any wonder you were drawn to the career of stand up. <laughs> Well, true. Well, this is this is because that's, that's not a proper job in a lot of senses. No, it's not. Well, that's actually a really good point. I've never thought of it like that. Mm. But that's it's funny you mentioned that. I'm only just thinking this now. Is that that is obviously a nighttime gig, mm. and I do really struggle with coming home from work and then having this trying to find this energy to actually go and do yeah stand up. I mean, I mean, as I said, I'm in bed by nine or nine thirty every night. Yeah, your body clock's not accustomed. It's completely to it. out. You hear stories of comedians. They're you know. In the beginning stages, they're not getting on stage until mm. you know one a.m., two a.m. Mm. in some of those inner city clubs. Yeah, you're you're sound asleep. That happened to me recently. You're in the middle <laughs> of your REM. You know, like that's yeah, not, exactly that's not good. In the middle of REM. Yeah, you're getting on stage. Yeah, not ideal. And on the flip side, I know how important REM is. Mm. So I'm conflicted. You are. You're do I very, want to be healthy or do I want to be happy? You're very health conscious. You've also got a health conscious girlfriend, which probably isn't helping. The matter? No, no. Well, she, well, she's health conscious in every way, apart Molly, from her diet. Yeah, well, true. I'll hold her accountable. But because for that. she does so much uh, activity, but she she's also up that. early. So she's that up suits, way earlier than yeah, I am. Yeah, and that suits your lifestyle together. So what you're saying is, I should get rid of her. No, what I'm, yeah, <laughs> get a night out for the sake of the podcast. Get rid of her. Yeah, yeah. Off mic. Keep her. It. Maybe it. reassess like her. Stand she's, up. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> when? So for you. It's pro- I think it's been a little while. You've got a full-time job and stuff. Hard to be getting on stage when you've mm. got a full-time job. Mm. It's probably been a little while now. Uh, yeah. been probably Last year at some point? Yeah, towards the end of last year. Um, just, to, just At the moment, we're in Jan. So, not that long, but... Yeah, towards yeah towards the end of last year. It was just a little open mic. I was like, oh, I'll just go and go and float a couple of ideas. And mm. um, again, because I don't actually know that many people in that in that area. Yeah. Um, well, at least in, in the Melbourne scene. Mm. I was put on quite last. Yeah. 
Um, I think I was like the second last in the last bracket. Mm-hmm. So it was, it was a good 30, 35 people in the room until it dwindled. It kept dwindling and dwindling and dwindling. And I was literally watching people leave at the end of every act because yep. they just like, to be honest, it got, it got worse and worse. Yeah. And there was a good hour between a laugh, I think. Because I've seen you do, I've seen you in front of, as you just said, thir- 10, 30 mm. odd people, depending on where it is, when it is. And then I've seen you when you were opening for Luke Kidgel, another mm. Melbourne comedian on the comedy festival. And it was a, like a, a sold out room. Yeah, it was about 100, I think. Still, yeah. <laughs> tell me, Jax. He, ja- he agrees. Yeah, yeah, he's not happy. Um, tell me though, is it a point where when it's when there's a smaller room, harder? Has to be. Cause I As in less people? Less people. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, shocking. 100%. But I think that would make you in the long run better for it because... Um, like I, because I don't, haven't done too many, yeah. I, you, you, like people would vouch for this if, if you're, you know, just starting out, you want to get your material right. You want to just, you just spend like hours and hours just honing on this one five minute bit that you've got yeah, or however long it is. And you're like, I'm not going to deviate from this path at all. Like anyone who distracts me, like whatever, like I'm just going to get straight back onto the joke. Yep. Um, but when you've got, you know, literally four or five people in the crowd and, and it's like 11.30 at night on a Tuesday, mm-hmm. you, you're you forced to go, oh, no, I'm going to have to add a little bit of this or like have a bit of interaction. I think, yeah, I think the thing that would scare me most, I've always considered doing it, mm. but the thing that would scare me most is in those rooms with less people seeing the... You know, being able to focus in on the, the disappointment potentially mm. on their faces. They go, yeah. oh. You learn a lot. You learn a lot. <laughs> you learn a lot. And a lot of those rooms, the lighting's not amazing. Mm. So you can see every single one of those five people looking at you like, you're, me- you're meant to make us laugh. Yeah. And you're like, oh, nah, fuck <laughs> that. Nah, not tonight. I'm it's trying. Wednesday. Not like, tonight. You should see me like at 12 p.m. on, yeah. a, on a Wednesday. Like, come over to like come my backyard to- with my mates. Yeah, like, I'm good. Be- yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, quick. Yeah. But like, you know, I'm usually in bed three hours ago. Right now, now I'm just telling some joke about my auntie and like, you know, like it's, it is hard. It yeah. is, it's hard work. But everyone, everyone who's, who's, you know, become successful from it, they all cherish those. It's hard. But it's so easy for me to just say, say this as well. Cause it's like, that's the thing you meant to say. Yeah. That's what you hear all them say. You hear they're all them saying, and I'm just regurgitating it. Yeah. But I'm in the actual moment where it, it, this isn't past tense. It's actually still, this is what's still happening to me. Yeah. Um, well, I think it's, it's, um, it's interesting when you have people like, and this is what we wanted to talk about today was sort of just the current uh, happenings with stand up comedy, mm. largely the specials that are out, like Netflix pumping them out. Mm. You look at somebody like Ricky Gervais, right? Big fan, as we know, I'm mm. a big fan of mm. him. Um, came to stand up comedy in his forties. Yeah, that that's mind blowing. Mm. But it also leans into that. Well, you know, maybe sometimes it's better to come to it later because you've got some life experience behind mm. you. You've got some. You're a bit more almost confident in who you are as a person. That's Ricky true. Gervais would be key to that. Mm. He is the most uh, confident with the fact I'm a, I'm, I'm a slob. You know, I'm a mm. piece of shit. Um, I'm cynical. You understand yourself at an older age. And that's mm. why you see Ricky Gervais in his 40s. I couldn't even think of being in my 40s and then standing stand-up, yeah. starting stand-up comedy. Yeah. Imagine that. I imagine. I mean, it does help that he had the office. <laughs> Absolutely. You have but the, your point you're for, is still... You're forgiven yeah. for any shortcomings because, well, no, yeah. he was funny in that other thing. Yeah. So it was almost there was a vehicle to get him there. Well, and I think he would admit that that, that was a vehicle as well. No matter how successful it was, it's an amazing show. He that that's definitely a vehicle for stand up, and you often hear a lot of people are like they do something else so yeah. they get that open. And it's usually the other way around, though, isn't it? it you is. and I have spoken about it. Look at Seinfeld, Jerry Seinfeld. Mm. He, you, well, he's he's the one that sort of highlights the um, the trend in comedians of using stand up as a vehicle to get what he had, which was a yeah. sitcom. Mm. In the eighties or early nineties, it was always okay. I need to look at Jerry. They'd go to their agents, apparently. They'd be like, look at Jerry. I want Jerry's deal. I want to do stand-up, do some specials, have NBC come along and watch, and then they say, hey, do a sitcom for us. And that was, by and large, the the rule of how things... It was a formula. It was a formula, mm. and it happened with numerous people. Look yeah. at Ray Romano. Um, you've got Kevin James, mm. who had uh, King of Queens. Mm. The list would go on, but... There were a lot of people that had that Jerry Seinfeld-esque uh, yeah. formula in their career. Yeah. 
But and now. the issue <laughs> became probably people just started using stand-up as the vehicle to get, to get yeah, there. Yeah, a lot of actors or something using, you know, In, hopefully I can come yeah. up with a good 10-minute bit Yep, and I'll just hone that for however long it takes, years, and, and it's get interesting. that to come. Yeah, it is. It's weird, and that's how though. Friends was created. That's how Friends was created. And that, kids, is how Friends was <laughs> That, kids, is how I met yeah. your mother. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I don't know. The, the flip side now is, though, is that people, there seems to be this newfound uh, appreciation and interest mm. in stand-up. And I think yeah. I would probably say because of Netflix. It's amazing. Oh, 100%. And podcasting, well, I think, would be a good good chunk of that percentage as mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. Getting to know people's personality before they get on stage. Yep. Um, so definitely, net, yeah. But net, Netflix is just, has just opened, opened the floodgates, really. Mm. But then, like, we're still in the thick of the storm there. So you don't know, like, it's like people say how podcasting... And Netflix is great for stand up. Mm. It is right now. Mm-hmm. But who who knows in the next ten to fifteen, even twenty years, whether or not podcasting could actually be a detriment to stand up. And what I mean by that is is you get so take take someone really famous right now, like a Chris D'Elia, who's who stand who I really I think he's getting better and better and he's becoming one of one mm. of my favorite comedians. His podcast is hilarious i love his podcast mm. and and he sells out all over the over, over the country but what's not to say that the podcast gets so good where people actually they're like well i don't really need to see him live anymore yeah i can hear him every week yeah him just being himself so mm-hmm. i mean that's just a that's not based on any so, yeah what is his podcast i'm not familiar with either podcast or his stand-up i've been meaning to you've told me for years i need to but does his podcast sort of is it a nice a companion piece or vice versa to the other thing. So the podcast yeah. is a nice companion to who he's on stage and vice versa. Yeah, I, I totally think so. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's just, it, it's, it's his way of getting at his personality. Yeah. And, and just really putting a spotlight on his personality. So yeah. then you're like, oh, this guy's hilarious. I'm going to see his stand up. And you when you go see him on stage and if you've listened to 200 of his podcasts already, you get, that's you 200 know, hours of knowing a person and then you're just like... You, you kind of get the idea He doesn't have to, to warm expect. up. He's already on stage as if he'd yeah. been doing it for half an hour. Everyone's already clapping. You're like, yes, I'll, this is the guy's personality. I'll, so it does. It just shines a spotlight on people's personality, which I think is huge. Yeah, you're them. right. You're definitely right. Yeah. Because I, I'm the same with uh, Mark Maron, WTF, the mm, podcast, mm. and then him on stage. So I'd never... I was introduced to Maron through the podcast. I'd always heard, oh, this is mm. really good. Uh, comedian, and he had all these trials and tribulations about his career, and he's only really hit it in his forties because he's got better life perspective. I was like, "All right, yeah. cool, this sounds interesting." And you listen to his podcast, and it it is it's fascinating. If anyone's listening to a, uh, looking for a podcast, one of these two are probably good ideas. But yeah, well, I mean, you just interviewed um, Brad Pitt and and Leo, <laughs> and Leo in the at same once. at and once, like and they were themselves too. Which they is were. Awesome. That yeah. was a really good podcast. Yeah. And um, the thing is, though, that you're right in that. He has this neurotic sort of sense of humor where very self-deprecating, all this mm. sort of stuff. And but that's that drew me more to him. I was like, I need I want to just listen to this guy. Mm. It made me source his stand-up. Yeah. Yeah. So then so there is yeah. the flip side. The, yes, there's negatives mm. where not to mention the other negative you didn't really touch on is using a lot of material for free. Yeah. You, you're putting a lot of stuff out there that, like, you know... Yeah. I, but if you're a good comedian, I think everything is material. Like, yeah, like mm, just, just something that pissed me off walking to the... Getting a coffee this morning. Mm. I could I could spend five minutes on a podcast talking about it, and I'm sure it, mm-hmm. it, it would come across as funny. But there's a difference between that and making a, a, an actual bit about it. But you, but you are right. Well, yeah. But a lot of people use that, and they do an hour every week on their podcast. I think Bill Burr does this. He, he stumbles... A, upon something exactly but yep. then it works so well because he's so honest with his audience that he'll actually say he's like oh i think i'm onto something here and he'll flesh that out by himself tune on... into the next special it'll be <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah and you tune into the next special and you see he's developed this five to ten minute bit on what he just stumbled across on his podcast so and the what podcast does it do? wouldn't have got it almost there. makes you feel involved you're involved yeah, yeah you're invested exactly. in it you've it's got inclusive. this connection you're like oh i was there when he when he actually stumbled across that mm. then suddenly you're like hey come look at this bit that he does right listen to this how funny is that yeah i was th- i listened to the yeah. podcast where it, yeah suddenly it all you've comes got this back to that you've got this yeah you've and that's that that's what podcasting is to a large yeah. part is that you have this emotional connection and mm. investment in you someone do. else you do who you've never even met and they're the best podcasts ones where they're truly being authentic mm. and so 
then it works the other way with the stand up is if they if someone's got a podcast and it's and it's a bit too um produced almost and mm-hmm. it's a bit too like I'm not buying it yeah. then if they're not buying your podcast because they don't think you're being authentic in that that's going to tarnish everything else or mm-hmm. hinder everything else because they're not going to want to see the other stuff you do they're like yeah no this, that guy's doing it to get ahead instead of just doing it because he yeah. loves doing it no, you know no exactly I mean? yeah that's that's very true i remember they got to a point with marin where he started because of his podcast it's it's literally relaunched his career mm. and he's now got he's part of netflix uh series glow like he's a series regular he was in joker he had a yeah. walk-on role he was yeah. on screen with De Niro, De Niro and Joaquin Phoenix, like, yeah, yeah, which is huge, and he's yeah. also he's getting all Brian Callen was in that for about two minutes as he well. He also was, <laughs> he also was, but it it is this weird thing where you start if they start getting bigger. I found this anyway. You you stumble across these people on a podcast, and it's very personal. Mm. It's what it feels one on one. That's the idea of it. Mm. You you go on your phone, you're looking, or you get recommended. You go on, you download this episode. They intru- they say hey to you when you first get there. Okay, like we've got this, we've got this thing yeah. going. Suddenly you see him on the big screen. You're like, oh, you never used to be doing that. Oh, that's cool. You yeah. start being like, Are you gonna outgrow the podcast? Like that's yeah. our thing, man. And, and I remember that was a real thing for Marin. He mm. had to try and find a way to keep himself grounded because not only did his Netflix special mm. start taking off, he started getting movie roles, TV roles, and it was like, huh, you're not becoming the niche cool uh, thing anymore. Yeah. It's it's a yeah. funny balance to have, yeah. but you are right in saying that most of these people having stand up specials now. A lot of them are coming from the world of podcasting, and mm. that's where they're finding their audience. Well, that's that's Netflix for you. They're not going to pick up someone off the street mm. who who just happens to be good at stand up. They want people to watch it. Yeah. And so it's it's like it's like The Rock and and um, Kevin Hart. Like they're the like the hardest working people in <laughs> in the world. Mm. But look at their just their Instagram alone. They like The Rock has one hundred and sixty something million followers. There's an audience. So the movie doesn't have to be good. The 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 people who produce it, like you know, Universal and stuff, they just go. All he has to do is promote this on his the, yep. on his channel, and we are guaranteed to have at least twenty million people. Um, you know, go buy tickets to this, mate. Like it's a formula. So like same with Netflix, they're not going to get someone who like you have to already have that success a little bit which which is worth it because it used to be you know a stand-up special didn't go to everyone yeah now it's like as much as i still think it's amazing it's almost like the word should be changed because it's not special when there's thousands of them out there now and there's Mm -hmm. different streaming services as well it's an interesting point you raise about having the existing audience so um like so when for instance, this is how it can start this small and it can get bigger. So when Tim and I had the radio show mm. we were doing, we were Which in, I love, by the way. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. It was good fun, good fun. You can find it at cheekyleprechaun.com. Um <laughs> but when we had the show, we were in this uh development thing for Triple M and there was a group of people that were involved. And then suddenly we felt like, and not to have sour grapes, but you know, fuck them at the end of the day. Mm. At the end of the day Grapes can be sour. Yeah, they can. We Everyone got filtered out and they brought in this new crop of people, which were, you know, ex-bachelorette contestants, uh, you know, Georgia Love, people like that. I don't know who that is. She was, she was uh, the bachelorette. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm. Bachelorette. Is that the one where the was guy is? No, that she was on The Bachelor. Was so, she hot? Yeah. She's hot, but she's a newsreader from Tassie. That's where she started. Had a little following, uh, went on The Bachelor, got a bigger following, mm. and then was looking to, you know, Bachelor's done. They don't want to expand their audience. Yeah. Why would you not? In their yeah. eyes, they go, well, we're going to get more listeners. They don't care about the content mm. necessarily. Netflix, that's where I'm at at the moment. I'm like, what's more important here? The content or the audience? Because mm. Netflix have the benefit of being a subscriber-based network mm. where they've got the subscribers largely. They're trying yes. to get people who are probably... I mean, how many people are going to subscribe to Netflix to catch that stand-up special? I wouldn't think that's something that would Specifically, twist your arm. No, no, I don't think so. I think they're appealing no. to their existing subscriber base, which is different. So you're not looking for new subscribers through this uh, content that mm. you're bringing. So I think Netflix still does have a premium on quality, which is interesting yeah. given that they are a numbers-based uh, system. And to your point... They're trying to get comedians with a following. They don't want no names. Mm. 
But it's almost like they want their no name. Sorry, their comedians with names is more focused on we want our existing subscribers, not new subscribers, existing, mm. to have some familiarity to this person. Yeah. So who did we see first? I mean, I think the first Netflix special was Bill Burr. He was the first one ever. Was he? Yeah, 2004. So you know more about this than me. I love that you get me on your show to, to deep No, no, dive. no. Well, I had to have some background. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Bill Burr was the first one, which I didn't. I was surprised by. Yeah. Because... 2014, I think it was, Bill Burr, maybe 2012. Mm. I wouldn't have known who Bill Burr was. Really? Would you? Oh, 100%. But really? that's because I've like... Yeah, you're, you're he, more he's been invested in, top in the... Well, he's been a top three stand-up in my eyes for for probably most of my life. Mm-hmm. Um, so that helped. Yeah. But definitely you're right that from an outside perspective, maybe you wouldn't have heard of him. From that rule of thumb of existing Bit older, members. Not very good looking. <laughs> yeah. and But that... Yeah. Well, that's true. Like, but... I don't know. I think then, you know, so many years later, I think what the issue was with Netflix, right? I don't know. Tell me what you think of this. Uh, Before Netflix, it was largely HBO. Mm. HBO had the stranglehold Mm. over stand-up specials for a large... Comedy Central. Comedy Central, Mm. HBO, those sort of uh, paid subscription channels in the States. Um, There was probably like a little bit of hesitation on comedians' parts to commit to they're like streaming like i'm not going to get actual physical numbers of how many people have watched i'm not going to be getting paid every Mm. time this reruns because it's just going to be on streaming service there was a lot of hesitation around netflix Mm. there still is to do a show on netflix because in the years since you've seen the big stand-ups come to netflix so initially you can understand bill burrs those people of the world who maybe at that time were more middle of the road Mm. they've now created that that door for those big names that they sort of laid the foundations almost. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. Cause like no, think definitely. about the names you've seen since then. It's been huge. Everyone. comedians, and, that, and, that, and that's the idea is to get a Netflix special, mm. which I think you're slowly changing though already. Yeah. But this is the thing with you. Obviously I think your last podcast was about Disney plus, wasn't mm. it? Mm-hmm. And like what they've done so well is they basically like lent out their material to Netflix and stuff until they built their service and mm-hmm. then they just ripped it off. Yeah. Because they own it. So yep. Netflix needs to own... All this That's content. why they've known this for so long. They've known that this was coming for ages. So they've been doing Netflix originals for a long, long time now, for a few years. And they're trying to just pump out as much yep. content. They miss a lot of the time, to be honest. Mm. A lot of them hit, but their their they've idea is like... They've got a lot of good shit. They've got a lot of good shit, but it's not like... It's not like HBO. Like HBO will throw out nine hit. things and do one thing and do it really, really well. Yeah. But they've been doing like... I don't know. They've been doing this for so long. Like HBO was just like HBO. Yeah. HBO is a well-oiled machine. Yeah, at this point. yeah. But Netflix is just like, no, we need content. We need it quick. We mm. need it quick. So a lot of it does miss, but they own it. So the idea is like, if you're someone who's like tossing up between, do I pay for Netflix or Disney Plus or something like that? Is Netflix Originals enough for me to actually give them my money? I yeah. mean, they still got my. Oh, actually, no, that's 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 incorrect. They've got my mum's. Money. Oh, I was going to say, do you not have Netflix? No, right? I use yeah. her Netflix. Um, yeah. But like, like, yeah, like, so there's this competition. So they've always borrowed all these shows. And that's why like a lot of comedians now are starting to shift in other directions as well. There's a lot of up and coming comedians. And when I say up and coming, I mean like they're, they're big already, but like not on the, like not on the complete world stage. Like Andrew Schultz comes to mind, you know, um, Andrew Schultz. No. So he's an American comedian, but he is absolutely like dominating the stand up world. Like he's, his crowd work is probably the best I've ever seen. Yeah. Just, he, he did a whole one, a whole half an hour special on, it's called Off the Top of the Dome or something like that, where mm. he just had no material, just went out and talked to the crowd. Jesus um, Christ. That, but that stresses he, me right out. He makes really good points that like, I think he just simply uses his own, like his own um, avenue. So he'll, uh, his website and like YouTube Stuff like that. Mm. So he knows that the like the money's not going to be like Netflix to start with, but he knows he owns that, he, and he will he own that forever. Content. He yeah. owns the content. So and a what lot of these do, comedians are wanting to own their content yeah. because, again, it comes back to your podcast and stuff like that. They own that podcast, and then they they have you know half a million people who listen every week. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of people. See? So why would you? I mean, it's you got to make money, and they love making money. So Netflix says, "I'll give you." 20 million for a special yeah it's hard I, to okay. say no. right, i can i can make up another hour of material yeah but you got people like andrew schultz who were like deliberately saying like nah fuck that i'm actually gonna i know i'm onto something here and i think he is too i think there's more what's I'm your theory wave. what's your theory 
Because I reckon I know what the theory is of why he's doing that. Besides ownership. Well, Ownership's key to this. Mm. I can't help but think. Look at what else do Netflix do with their specials? They take them off after a while. They do that, but they also purchase old ones. So, mm. for example, Bill Hicks. You will see oh, yeah. Bill Hicks specials from the 90s. You'll see all that Jerry Seinfeld from the 90s. You see all these things. Seinfeld owns all his. I know that for a fact. Well, his, his net worth tells you that. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> so, that's so, what, what do saying. you do? You build a library yeah. of stuff. You build a fan base big enough. Yeah. You go to Netflix. You say, hey. You can borrow this for two years. You can, yeah. it's mine. You can pay for it. Look at what Stan, Netflix, yeah. Seinfeld. Every three, five years, whatever it is. Jerry Seinfeld makes another 90 mil. <laughs> Him and Larry make so much they money make off bank. the rerun. It's, it's, yeah. I don't know. There's something about, you're right, ownership mm. of your content. But it's been, it's been confident enough to know that you're going somewhere. Like, mm. I think, like, if you're not someone who's realistically that good or, or going to go that far, yeah. then, yeah, like, you want to make some money while you can. There's but a fine line, isn't there? There's a, there's a couple people who are, who, money who are special. Can. And I think Andrew Schultz is definitely one of those guys. I think he's okay. confident enough and almost cocky enough just to be like the, the middle finger. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to have to familiarize myself with him. So what, you can just go on his website? Uh, website, yeah, just um, YouTube. Okay. Yeah, I'm here promoting his stuff. <laughs> yeah, clearly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. So, yeah, I don't know. I think there, there's a definitely a... um. The only thing I think with stand-up specials on Netflix is there is a lot on there that I'm not familiar with, which isn't a bad thing because it does force you to, you know, if you're doing nothing, you might stumble across a new comedian. Mm. I, How likely are you? I don't think I'm likely. To press play on a, on a, on, on a special because... On a special in general, mate, not, not that. I have to be really intrigued. There's specials I'll get really excited about. Yeah. But they are... Hype. But they're they're from people I've got a pre existing well, that's connection right. with. Well, it's funny because you've you've the people you've had on this show mm. are very nerdy in their own right, yes. like in their field. Yep. And then when you've asked me to come on, which I'm I'm loving this, yep. by the way. Yep. Um <laughs> great. But I can't say that I'm like like I do stand up and I write and I and I write comedy like a lot. Mm-hmm. But I don't I watch the the best of the best, and I'm um, like I'm always studying, I guess. But mm. I'm ne- I, but to be honest, I don't watch that much stand up. Mm. Um, it's like I don't know. You just sort of if you watch something for too long, I think, and you do that thing, you can sort of like burn out from uh, it. Burn out from it. But so like so you get me on. But at the same time, like I would like to know: Do people are all people like that where they want to know a pre existing? They, they know someone from other things before they watch it. I would think there's a lot of people that are. I think you've either got to be, well, you've just sort of proven this point wrong, but I would imagine you've either got to be like a real student of it and you've got to want mm. to be exposed and experienced with a lot of various uh, inter-genres mm. of stand-up comedy. Um, and I, I think stand-up comedy is such an acquired taste though, not only as the... Um, the genre itself, but the comedians, they all vary so much. Their, yeah. their content is all so different. So, for instance, Alan DeGeneres has a special on Netflix and I've um, um denied over it mm-hmm. numerous times and I'm mm. like, I, I do like Alan a lot. I mm. just, I know, I know Alan is like the daytime talk show host. I'm like, yeah. She like, was a stand-up before. She was a stand-up yeah. before and I've seen some of her highlights. Very fucking funny shit. Mm, mm. But I'm still, there's part of me, Ben, Mm-hmm. That believes you've got to be in the room. What do you mean? You've got to be in the room in the theatre. You've got to be in the club where it's being performed. Oh, yeah, I get yeah. there is a detachment for me that happens when I'm watching on TV. I can be on my phone. Oh, I can, it, it's not a. It's not a, a, a. Again, a genre that is demanding of your total mm-hmm. attention and focus. Yeah, the other day, because you might get grilled as well. Yeah. It's live. Like, Absolutely. You don't want to be that you, person. Yeah. And, and that is, that's half of it. They keep you accountable. Yeah. Comedians. Yeah, they're like a stage. teacher. Yes. If you're out of line, hey. If you're on your phone in class. Yeah. Woo. Nah, you don't. So that's I, that's I agree true. with that. That's if, true. If, if something, if I'm watching a Netflix special or watching a special, mm. if I'm laughing watching it on TV, that is, that tells me that that is a fantastic comedian. Yeah. Because you're right. I, I, I will watch a, a special from start to finish and I might laugh two or three times. Mm-hmm. And if someone says, what like, what was it like? I'll be like, yeah, it was really good. Yeah. And, and it was like the writing was good. The performance was good. But you're not pissing yourself. Mm-hmm. 
and whether or not that's because yeah you're right and when you're in yeah when you go see stand up live and then you see a good comedian doing a good room there's probably no better feeling than like sometimes when you're in that audience. You feel part of something. Everyone's laughing. You, you, you're talking to people you've never spoken yeah. to before. You're looking life. around. You're, you're looking at yeah. people going, how good yeah. is this? That is yeah. amazing. So that would, that's why I think that stand-up will probably never never go away. No. And it's, I think it's the same as going to the movies. Like everyone's thought like, you know, with your 3D, 4D, mm. um, VR, like all this sort of stuff coming in, like AI, whatever you want to talk about. But the, as a human though, I love just... Going to the movies. That's, yeah, absolutely. And I think what you've just sort of touched on is stand-up never going away. It's it's such an old form, mm. isn't it? Like, think about it, like clowns in the, I don't know, 1920s. <laughs> you'd go, you'd watch a clown. You'd watch a, a mimer. What are those? What are yeah, those? Yeah. yeah, you'd watch a yeah. mime. Yeah. You watch, Charlie Chapman sort some, of put those together for a bit. Yes, yeah. There's something about watching, sitting and watching somebody do something that's meant to amuse you. Yeah. And you just sit there and you just wait. There's something there's something so basic about it. Yeah. And Anticipation. That's, and that's probably why that you see with stand-up specials, for the most part, they're all pretty bare bones. Mm. It, a stand-up special can be a guy, microphone, stool, and a sta- like slightly elevated stage. Yeah. And people sitting down. They they're can, my favorite ones. Yeah. And that's how basic it can be. That's why things at uh, the Comedy Cellar in New York, like you watch those videos. Mm. It's so basic. There's a little sign behind him and it's just a guy on a tiny stage. Mm. But the documentary uh, comedian, Seinfeld. Oh, yeah, yeah. What's the, uh, what's Orny the other Adams. guy's? Orny Adams. Who, by the way, is actually starting to... I've noticed he's popping up a lot more in, in my Instagram feed and stuff like that. Like he's, He came to Australia last did, year did yeah. and he was popping up all through my stuff too. And I, I maybe clicked on something at one point <laughs> and now I've noticed... A lot of awning. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, a lot of awning. A lot of, yeah. But if anyone hasn't seen the documentary Comedian and you're interested in sort of... Because I am. I'm fascinated by how comedians' minds work. Oh, I think yeah. it's... Yeah. They operate on a different level. There's a mm. reason why I'm not I'm not even trying it because I don't think I, I have... You should. I don't think I have that, though. Let's do an open mic together. Oh, I reckon that's, we could. that's interesting. Just five minutes. You, you've you emceed weddings. There's mm. not much not much difference. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a well, lot. Maybe we can There's just, a lot difference. You're actually tr- like... Flat out trying to make people laugh, and you not... also know some of the room. Yeah, I and, think and helps. You, yeah, and you can roast pity laugh. Roasting, you can easy roast. Yeah, because roast everyone people. knows the groom. Everyone understands the yeah. Yeah, that, look, it is hard, but but it is talking. But you talk, but you keep bringing it up. You do keep bringing it up, so I'm not no, sure. Oh, here we go. No, here I'm just not sure. You just well, sort of like it. you're. I do admire yeah, it though. Yeah, There's yeah. something about watching a stand-up co- comedian make a room full of people laugh. Mm. It's it's enticing and it's fucking fascinating. Even watching someone bomb for me. I like really looking mm. into their soul when they're bombing because yep. I've felt that before and, and it's the, it is the worst feeling in the world. Yeah. But looking at someone else doing it, it's just like, it's, I don't know, it's a, even that's beautiful in a way because it's someone is learning a lot about themselves mm-hmm. on the spot. Mm-hmm. It's very, very um, right away. And it's, it's very uh, interesting to see a well-respected comedian bomb. It happens all the time in Melbourne. Yeah, I won't name anyone, but there's a lot of there's a lot of <laughs> there's some shit out there. There's a lot of like a lot of um, radio pre- presenters who are who are comedians yes. who you go and watch their stand up and it's subpar. Okay, and, and like it's not like that sounds like it's you know a bit salty or whatever. But mm. I, th- I think if you're you have a full time job, which is on the radio, you, like and you're you're working on that show all the time. And then you, you're doing stand up on the side. The stand up, the stand up does fail a little bit because mm. of that. You do need to spend a lot of time on it to be good at it. Like the best stand ups are mainly stand ups. They have their own podcast, but they don't do any prep for it. Yep. They just go, ah, oh, you know, who pissed me off the other day, and well, they just go from there. But More riffing rather than having thought out. Yeah. Uh, like you know, structured. Someone, jokes. someone who I, uh, who I have become to admire a lot in the last couple of years, who I. Didn't really like Once Upon a Time is Dave Hughes, actually. Which, Mate, which, which, I, I saw Hughesy two years ago and he popped up and did 15 minutes of the comedy, yep. uh, what do they call it? Uh, like Comics, Comics Lounge. Comics Lounge. Yeah, yeah. Blew me away. Yeah. Couldn't yeah. believe the it. The stand-up is very, very good. Yeah. Um, and I think I think it was because he decided to take time away from the project and, and, and from radio. And yeah. now he's he got the stand He's 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 very clever because he will do your radio and your... your, your um, 
your projects and stuff like that for a while. Uh-huh. Take a little break from stand up. Yeah. He get, he reaches a uh, he's a household name and then he quits doing those things so he can get better at his stand up again. And he's just always got this sort of balance mm-hmm. going and really nice balance. Whereas some other people might do the the radio for too long and they will try and balance it at the same time with the stand up. And the stand up's just never as good because it's not well, it's not that relatable or they or it's a forced a forced relatability. Like I, I I've got a theory when it comes to Dave Hughes, which could be very wrong, could be totally <laughs> wrong. But I remember all I'd heard was, yeah, Hughesy, meh. like you won't, yeah, he's, like he's all right. Or... He, yeah, he's annoying or yeah. his stuff's not that funny. And then when I saw him, so Hughesy and Kate were famous in Australia, I, don't, I think they were uh, nationally, for uh, being a Nova Breakfast radio mm. show for 10 or so years. It was a, so while, it was a yeah. long time. And you're right, he had that period where he was off and he was just doing stand-up and he was doing um, some like the project and stuff. And then Husey and Kate came back to Fox FM in Melbourne, again, nationally around Australia, um, and he does drive. Mm. So he gets in the office at about, I've seen him walking about two, gets on air at 4, 4.30, goes till 6.30. There's something about Brecky Radio, having done a little bit of it myself, mm. fucks you You've got nothing. Absolutely. You've got nothing in the tank. It would. Now his day starts at two o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. Do a bit of writing in the Lord's morning. I mean, if I was a stand-up comic, I would prefer that way around. Oh, I think most people would. Yeah. Yeah. But to my point, all I've heard lately is how good Husey is on stage. You've got to mm. see Husey. Mm. Again, I might be drawing a long bow here, but I just thought, huh, that's an interesting yeah. correlation between what he was doing in his past and what he's doing Definitely. now. It comes back to me. Being in bed by nine, being up at, you know, five or six. It's... <laughs> If you could open your own comedy store, which maybe, you know, the set start at 4pm, be out the door by 8, in bed by 9. Wouldn't yes. that be ideal for you? It'd be nice, but, Close you're, it. but you're also not taking into account 99% of no. people who work no. 9 to 5. <laughs> you start you start doing it at 4. Yep. You get no, a couple tradies on their lunch break and like, that's about it. You're, you're very right. Did you, um, where do you sit with, uh, this is slightly off topic, I'll draw it back to where we were though, Andrew Dice Clay. I saw him live. Um, Did you really? Yeah, yeah. I saw him live. He played at the Palladium in Crown, uh-huh. which is a very Dice Clay place to play. That is, yeah. I, I, don't, say, like, yeah. I don't like talking shit about people. Um, You're yeah. going to though. No, well, I I'm not it. because I, 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 like, I know him I know him pretty well through the Joe Rogan podcast. Like, that's how I've... I thought you were going to say personally then. <laughs> no, no, no. But like, I mean, but the personality. Like, what I, we were saying. Well, I think, I think Joe should be paid... Actually, I think Joe should be on a contract from your Netflix and stuff because all these other guys who are now huge, mm. I found out through them from from the Rogan podcast. Like it's all his good friends and yep. stuff like that. Yeah, which like he's propped them up huge. We won't get go, get into that, but but Dice Clay was one of those. And I don't know, like, not is it just okay to say not my cup of tea? Absolutely. <laughs> I think I think if anyone's an acquired uh, taste, it's Andrew Dice Clay. I mean. Mm. I he laughed a lot when I was when we saw it. Yeah. When uh, yeah. I yeah, think you would bodies, because a, a lot of his stuff is shock shock humor as well. You can't yeah. believe in when did you see him? A couple of years ago. Uh, probably four or five years ago yeah. now. So, but, but shock wears off if you're waiting for shock. Yeah. Like he his stuff. I don't know. Like it actually like it's if you read it on paper or you hadn't seen it. Shock. Yeah. But you're expecting it, so it's not shocking. Mm. Whereas like you really have to work hard at the writing. To be, to maintain that shock, yeah. Um, like um, Anthony Jeselnik, he he's very shock humor. Um, do you know Do you know Jeselnik? Yeah, yeah. He, but his writing is is still getting better and better. Mm. Like I can like you can sort of see where a joke's going a lot of the time with with shock people. Mm-hmm. But he's always catches me off guard. Yeah. So I'm like, that's a massive credit because he's he's working really hard on like this is too obvious. If I give him this punchline, I'm actually going to go around and give him that one. Where I thought I think Clay. Does give you that one that you expected? Mm-hmm. That yeah, well, that's true. But also, I think that could be a matter of um, knowing what to expect when it comes to Andrew Dice Clay. And you're right in that you've got to find ways to keep yourself fresh. Mm. I don't think he has. I think, and you know, when was he at his peak in the eighties? I think yeah. it was. Yeah, with the uh, nursery rhymes. Yeah, like that. That's ages ago. Yeah, and not to mention a lot of the shit he does is uh, hard to do now. 
Oh yeah, yeah. You, you can't. He's still doing Eddie Murphy raw AIDS jokes <laughs> yeah. about gay people. Yeah, he's still doing that in 2015. It's like, bro, yeah. I think you missed the memo. <laughs> so, or did he not? Because well, that's still an audience. There the is people who yeah, who don't yeah, want right. who don't want to go with that trend, mm. which is fine. Yeah, I think that's great. You can find it, but it's hard to maintain and please that crowd. Mm. I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm fascinated you saw him though, because I would have been interested. Yeah, to see well, a good how friend, of, a good friend of both of ours um, recommended him because he was obsessed with him, and I was like, "Yeah, I'll come." Let's. Who'd let's you go it. with? Ryan. Ah, yeah, okay. yeah, he loves him. Like, he always, always quoting his his like little Miss <laughs> Muffet. And just like, yeah, and you just you always give that. <laughs> if you it, give that little fake, like. <laughs> see, I think to be honest, where I came from, yeah, good one. It, it, there's yeah. nothing worse when somebody tries to recite a joke of another person's. I hate it. Well, I'll go out of my way not to do it yeah. because I know I'll butcher it, and that's so disrespectful. <laughs> Sitting down today, I thought one thing I mustn't do is try and do a joke of somebody. It's yeah. never good. You're and it's never, never no, it's you're never not in good. a setting. You're it's not. Uh, but um. Yeah, Dice, I think I first saw an entourage. That's where oh, I okay. that's where yeah. I first was like. But even he guy? played and himself I, yes. at the time as like this guy who's sort of lost his way, yeah. like he wants to get back in the game somehow, who he will attach to anything, even if it's Johnny Drama. Mm. <laughs> yeah, well that's true. <laughs> it says a lot. Here's um here's a thought. I just I just stumbled across this thought. So it looks like you're reading your notes, so I'm not sure if you just mate, stumbled across it or not. It's Garage Band. Look at that shit. Oh, you're on Garage Band. Yeah, I like Garage Band. Keep it's it very simple. simple. Keep simple. it simple, yeah, mate. Some yeah. of the biggest podcasts do it on. Garage I used Band. Audacity once, and and it and it cut off half the interview. I edit in Audacity, but I oh. record in Garage Band. Very touchwood. Yeah, uh, does not fault. Mm. So mm. anyway, what I was going to say was, here's a thought, right? So when we're we're talking about this Netflix stuff, mm. comedy specials. They're trying to maximize their subscribers to, you know, okay, yes, we're probably, first of all, can I just say, since 2014 or whenever it was they first did their first uh, stand-up special, they've done over 230. On Netflix? Yeah. 230? 230. Between 2017 and now, majority of those came out. Does that, oh, okay. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, it really picked up pace. So, mm. obviously, the, the viewers were there. There's a formula that was working. Yeah. Let's just... There is only a certain amount of money in the world, right? Pretty well, fair to say. I, think, I, think, <laughs> I actually think that's incorrect. Is there? Can you just keep printing? <laughs> no, you can't keep printing, but no one's using cash. True. It's all on card. Yeah. <laughs> Go on, as you're saying. Netflix, they're, they're not just in the stand-up comedy game. They're mm. in a, a bunch. Mm. All sorts of shit they're making regularly. So their, their production costs would be pretty high now. They've, they're a studio. They're now a functioning studio. You're putting out that many stand-up specials, right? Over 200. Largely between 2017 and now. I would say between 2017 and now, with that increase, there's probably been, I don't know, off the top of my head from what's caught my eye, five stand-up specials a year where I've gone, I know that person. Okay, yeah. Therefore, I'd imagine high price tag on them. You know, there was the Seinfeld one a couple of years ago. There's been Adam Sandler's had one. Yeah. Uh, Louis well, had a couple. I think of the Rock, of Rock got paid a Chris lot Rock. to do two, I Mate, think. Eddie, we'll yeah, touch on Eddie Chappelle. Murphy soon. Chappelle, yeah. big names, yeah. right? Higher price tag, but they wanted to pump these things out. Yeah, yeah. So naturally, the they've got a lot of other ones which are, yeah, you might not know this person. What do we need? All right, we need something where we can like introduce these people. Hey, we've got that deal with Jerry. Jerry's got that show Comedians in Cars. Mm. Is that Netflix now too, isn't it? Netflix. But is that, but is that Jerry le- uh, loaning it? To Netflix or is it? Uh, Jerry still owns it. Yeah, yeah. But there's a working partnership there. Yeah. I would argue you go look at the last couple seasons of Comedians in Cars. Whether it's a big stand up comic or a little unknown stand up comic, they've all had a stand up special Mm. in that window that Mm. that season's come out. Perfect way to who do we trust when it comes to comedy? Jerry. Jerry's Jerry's funny. Yeah. Jerry says they're funny. They must be funny. I'll watch that stand up special. Mm. It's pretty smart. Yeah. And I, Definitely. I, I mean, they he brought out that last season and Eddie Murphy was on it. He was the first guest on uh, season yes. four or whatever it yeah, was. Yeah. I messaged you. I go, hey, Eddie Murphy's on this stand-up, spe- uh, on uh, Comedians in Cars. I think he's like, he's starting to pop up a little bit. Yeah. What's happened since then? We're getting uh, Coming to America 2. Yeah. Uh, Dol- Dolomite was yeah, my name or whatever that, it is. Yeah. Um, SNL. SNL. So that is happening and yeah. Netflix signs a $70 million contract for multiple stand-up specials with Eddie Murphy. So That's reported, so, so 70 your, million. Your theory is basically using Jerry's as an advertising... It's a, it's an avenue. Bit, yeah. I mean, Jerry's getting great guests on. 
mm. but also Netflix. I love that show, by ne- the way. It's a fantastic <laughs> show. And I've got to be honest, I'm one of those people. I watch comedians in cars. Yeah, you get a snippet of that personality. The and start, like, I like that guy. Yeah. I like that girl. And you're like, hmm. The start starts with Jerry going, one of the funniest people I know. I love her work. And you're like, huh, Jerry really likes this person. Mm. You watch the episode, they become likable. They get a chance to show their personality, who they are. You see a little bit of their life. What what kind of coffee they like? Oh, I feel like I know this person. (laughs) Oh, there's their special. Fuck, you know what? Maybe I'll give that a go because, you know, Jerry vouched for it. They're also into almond lattes. Mate, there's nothing wrong with almond latte. Well, well, there there is... I made you order an almond latte on your way here. I made you get me a coffee. You'll come to do my podcast. Mate, that's how much I respect you. On a a Saturday, this is being being recorded too. Saturday morning, you made me get up. I've been up and active. Well, I've been up and active because you know I get a bit of bed (laughs) on. See, 10.30, you're almost ready for your mid-morning nap. You record this in your own home Mm. and you you were late. So, yeah, I'd been elsewhere. Yeah, so you. This is this is a message I got from you. Yeah. You were you were being late because one, you had guitar lessons first thing on a Saturday morning, and uh, then bettering in the, myself in the same. No, I don't mind that. But yeah. then in the same message, asked if I could order you. Oh fuck off! That's not what happened. An, an arm and latte. <laughs> I said, "Would you like a coffee on my way through?" And you said. Uh, I was thinking about going to Piccolo. Did you want me to grab you yeah. one? You can get the one after. So full disclosure, I will get you one back. Yeah, no, and so, it's not you, about getting you a coffee. It's about you making me order that over the... Like, you, you, Absolutely. Like, I giggled when I sent it to you. Yeah. I could have asked for soy. I could have asked for soy. Yeah. I would argue soy is worse than almond. Oh, it is for men titties. That's, that's a proven Is fact. that a thing? Nah, I don't soy know. Soy milk no thing. good for you. Uh, not for men. No, estrogen or something like that. Good or to know. Did it twinkle in your, your your eyes just went, oh, crap. No, well, okay. So, off work. topic. I mean, we're, we're slightly sw- well, skewing it's, off it's topic, on the but topic, it's good, it's good stuff. Yeah. Um, went to big tea too, guy. Love my tea. <laughs> well, that doesn't surprise me. I mean, me. almond lattes, nice Teas, cup of tea. Yeah. It's all making sense. Panties. Sensitive new age guy. Mm, okay. Mm. In T2 the other day, and I'm, you know, I'm doing the samples. I'm floating around, you know, what's this? Oh, it's a, it's a cold tea. Okay. Mm, mm, yum. I get to one and was I it, hang on, was it cold because it because it was just it was sat there for no, a while. No, it was iced tea. Oh, iced okay, tea. Right. And then they go, "Oh, you want to try this new blend?" And I was like, "Yeah, great." You know, I'm, I'm up there with the orange little cup, <laughs> sipping, slurping away. And they said to me, "Oh, it's made with soy milk." And I thought, "It's delicious. Maybe I need to make my teas with soy milk." Mm, soy milk's not good for you. Yeah, apparently not. Because you meant it. It's Re- well, not just that, <laughs> and I'm not sure if that's true. Okay, I have said that. We'll hear about it. But if you read true. the nutritional information on it, which mm. I'm a big fan of doing, mm. um, it's very high in in things that you if you things to, things that you, well <laughs> high in carbohydrates and sugars. It's and, quickly sounding like something you heard on Joe Rogan. No, no, I've read one recently because oh, I wanted really? to start switching because when I when I have some certain certain shakes at home, I, I have almond. Um, I, I actually I actually like almond milk myself. Hmm. Well, screw you then. Well, I'll just never order an almond latte. I mean, la- you know, you latte is already a little. Uh, mm. yeah. yeah, and then you've just gone almond. Like I actually got asked if it was for for my girlfriend. I said no, she's Frack she's off. not a loser. So it was like <laughs> she's not a loser. But no, I mean, I've just yeah, don't mean to brag, but just long black for me. Uh, you're one of those guys. There is a certain person that is just, you know. No calories. People have a, a way of showing their status as a human or they Absolute, feel like they do absolutely. in their coffee order. Absolutely. It's fascinating. This is Melbourne. It's 2020, mate. <laughs> you want to get ahead, you you order long black. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I've got a percolator. I'll make this sweet. Well, maybe we'll try one after this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I might try an almond latte after this. We'll see how we go. We'll see. Well, I don't want to have too many coffees because, you know, 9, nah. 9 p.m. is my... Bedtime. Shadi, so. Tell me. I think we need to discuss this. What what would be? I, I want to hear you. We spoke earlier about you know. There's a difference between watching a stand up special and laughing you know out loud. There's huh, yeah, that's, oh that was good, or even just registering in your mind that was funny. Mm, I like what they did there. I want to hear what are some of the stand up specials spring to mind when I say what's made you. <laughs> just laugh your ass off. We touched on him earlier for literally one second before because it's a, it's a taboo to mention his name these days. Yeah, but, you heard when I mentioned it. But no, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I hear everything. Louis. Yeah. Mm. There has been no one who's made me laugh as hard. Mm-hmm. Watching, I've never seen him live. Um, I probably would still. <laughs> that I want to let's talk about that before we continue with that. Let's branch off. Where do you st- where do you sit on Louis CK? What do you mean? Don't put me in this sort of like no. I'll talk stronghold. about it. No, I'll talk about it with you because I I I don't 
It's fucking hard. I heard somebody talking about it the other day. And to be honest, I got sucked into thinking I knew more about the situation than I did. But this is the thing. This is why I'm, I'm, I don't want to comment too much because I have, I'm not one to read too much into things. Mm. I haven't read that much into it. So I would be, an, it would be an ignorant point of view. Yeah. All I know is at the end of the day, his stand up comedies. Yeah. <laughs> makes me absolutely like lose it. I've heard lose that it. his new stuff, because he's back. Do you, think back, should, do, you should, do you think he should be back on stage? I think he can do what he wants. Yeah, it's stand-up comedy. That's one of the things, did he, isn't did it? He, did he go to prison? No. No. Where do you sit on Bill Cosby? <laughs> well, that's a fun... That, this is where I sit on the whole thing. Yeah. Is that those two things are not that similar. No, they're not at all. They're not at all. But it's somebody... It's but this a is comedian. the thing. We like to rope everyone in. Even Aziz got roped in because he had one bad date. Yes. Wait, who? Aziz, I'm sorry. He, oh, he even, oh, okay, he even got sorry. shamed. Yeah, because it's, I, don't know. I don't. I don't know anything about that one. No, well, neither. But you but, know what? And you know but what? Cosby's the issue is? a piece of shit. I'll Cosby's say that. a scumbag. Do you? This is this is a good question that I always hear, my, hear being asked. So with these people, right? Do you find it different to go back and watch their stuff? Not personally, no. 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 I, I mean, I will watch it, and I know in the back of my mind, it's like it's almost a guilty pleasure. It's almost like I want to watch you feel, it more. You feel a little naughty. I'm like, I shouldn't be. Like, this guy has been shunned. <laughs> I, you know, yeah. it's, it's like his stuff's obviously been pulled and stuff, but mm. you can still find. And again, going back to talking about Andrew Schultz, he Louis owns his stuff, so all of like Louis's mm. um, website, like he like he's got his own shows, and like obviously there's Louis and the um the other one, and so he's still got control. Had Netflix owned his shit, and then that this could happened, completely squash him. Yeah, could they'd, they'd bury him. him. They'd yeah. bury it forever. Yeah. I think well with stand up, but you're you're your own. You're a sole practitioner. You're you know you're you you own your own business. So it's so, so to say that he can't weird. do stand up anymore is like who are you to say that mm. if you you don't own like you can boycott, you can not go, mm. but I guarantee you there's still a lot of people who, who love his stuff. Just to give you an idea of where I sit, right? This is, and it, it it changes with everyone. Like I'll feel different about each person, but it does largely depend on how much of a connection I've got to that person. So. Mm. Uh, to switch gears a little bit, I think a lot of people be familiar with this. You you get stuck into me all the time for being a wrestling fan, right? You love it. You love getting stuck into almond me. lattes. Yeah, yeah almond lattes. Wrestling, lessons, lovely. T two. Are you familiar with Chris Benoit? Well, everyone uh, is. Yes, yes. Everyone is. What's your? What do you know about Chris Benoit? <laughs> Only that you and our other friend Lucas talk about him all the time. Yeah, I actually don't know anything about him. Do you know how he died? Chris Benoit? Yeah. I thought that was Eddie Guerrero who died. He died too, but for far less bad reason. Chris Benoit killed his wife oh, shit. and killed his disabled son and then hung himself. Triple murder, suicide. So he killed himself by hanging himself from Isn't his weight. Double there. murder? Double suicide? murder, suicide, because he did not murder himself. I don't think he counts. Himself. That cancels out, I think, if you kill yes, your, yeah, yes. That's double murder, murder, suicide. Yeah. Triple murder, suicide. I think murder has to be ring. another person. Mm. Anyway. <laughs> mm. No, but, but but that's awful. So that's that's that, right? Yeah. So already... Way fucking worse than what any of those other people have just spoken about did. Not saying what they did isn't bad, but this person literally murdered people, okay, mm. and murdered a child. So really fucking bad. Not yeah. to not to lessen any of the other ones, but I still find myself wanting to watch his stuff <laughs> because I'm like he was one of the best ever. And had he how not do you done become that, one of the best ever in, in? I'm so ignorant. I'm sorry, but you are you be, very ignorant. How do you? Be, but at least I can admit that. Yeah, absolutely. That's fine. What, what makes the uh, best stuff in terms of... You're a performer. Yeah, you have yeah. an ability to make it make what you're doing seem believable Yeah, and make it seem realistic. <laughs> it seems believable? Yeah, okay. absolutely. Maybe I'm not watching the, the correct stuff. I'll send you a YouTube link of this guy, right? He was this jacked little bloke and mm. you'd believe he'd beat the fuck out of people. You're like, yeah, no, I could, I could mm. see that. And he'd put them in moves and submissions, which you're like, that would hurt if they put that on. Mm. He would fly off the top, <laughs> top rope... And headbutt people, and you'd watch his head hit it, and they reckon that's that they reckon I was gonna that, ask. They reckon that fucked him did up. Did they study his brain yeah. after? They He's, did. So he had the brain of a ninety-year-old. They really? reckon. When did he, he have died. CTE? Like yes. the footballers? Yeah, bad. Yeah, bad. But it was undiagnosed because it was. Why well, the time? Well, it's only only becoming a yeah, thing now. This is mid two thousands. Yeah, this that's happened. that's that's in terms of science a long time Scary. ago with what they're coming up with. Same with Aaron Hernandez. Have you seen that documentary? No, is he? He was the tight end from um, the Patriots. No, got I've done heard for that about murder the murder and that. got off on oh, another is this double. The, is this the new thing on Netflix? Yeah, inside the Killer Mind. Yes, I've got it. It's fascinating. On the, it's on the watch list, mate. Fascinating. Apparently, fascinating. it's really good. The best documentaries are the ones where they set out as one, 
one idea and then it just evolves. Yeah, suddenly there was all these other things. Realize, yeah, <laughs> but but like not to ruin anything, but it looks like he had that same injury in that brain. And a lot of people are like, it doesn't excuse this. And that. Well, it's like, well, if you're, if you, <laughs> if you can like murder your wife and son, mm. there is obviously something not right. Clearly. Yeah. Clearly, there's something in your brain not right. Yeah. And especially if at one point they're people you loved. Exactly. And then what? You suddenly turn around and just snap. What if you still loved? What if you still did? Yep. Well, why do you kill yourself? I mean, that could be. Well, you wouldn't be able to live with that. No, because you've just murdered people. You're yeah. like, what did I just do? I mean, that could be one thing that he felt. Yeah. What did I just do? But the but- brain of a nine year old, how old was he? Uh, late 30s, early 40s. Shit. Fuck it, that's that's it's insane. That's more than double it's his insane. age. That's crazy. I know we spoke about um, Ryan earlier, our our friend friend of ours. Mm. He was a really good um, boxer. Mm. He like under 18s, that sort of thing. And he, well, very smart guy as well. Like went studied law, um, economics, and this sort of stuff. And he made an active decision to stop yeah. doing boxing at a very young age because of because of these these things. Too many shots to the head. It's it not is. good for it's you. Not good for you at all. It's not at all good. So for I you. guess what we're learning here is that actually maybe. No. That Louis still really good at Louis, stand up. I, it's like, has Louis taken shots there? Maybe not. <laughs> mm, no, no. But yeah, I don't know. There, there is something. I think the difference is in this situation, right? A comedian, you you're wanting to laugh at. You're mm. wanting to go. You you want to give them validation by laughing at what they're doing. Yeah. There's something then that is stopping you from wanting to give them validation, whether it be clicking on the video and laughing along, or being in an audience and laughing at them. There's something you want to take ownership of how their their life and how they're feeling in their life by sitting there and being like, that's not funny. <laughs> Sucked in. That must feel like shit. Bet those girls felt like shit. Mm. Piece of shit. Mm. That's what that's the stance people take. People <laughs> want to somewhat retaliate by yeah. trying to take control back of their thing. Mm. So like Louis' thing is stand-up comedy, making people laugh. They're like, eh, fuck you. Yeah. You want to do that? Guess what? Yeah. I'm not going to listen. Yeah. <laughs> That's, I don't know. That's just because like, yeah. what else do you do? I can't do anything to Louis. No. And, I, and to be honest, I don't want to. I, I don't care enough. Mind you, I there is something about me that feels a little bit dirty about him being out there making jokes about, uh, yeah. about the whole situation. Mm. Again, all I can go off is a New York Times article I read and then the conflicting views I've heard from his friends, both of which are compromised views. Mm. New York Times wants a good story to sell. These friends kind of want to help Backing their mate. Yeah. yeah, they're like left and, it's left and right. It's, we don't have that in the middle. Sit? I don't know. Most people sit. are in the middle, but you only hear about the left and the right. Who do and you I, vote? I don't mean political. Like politically, yeah. yes, but but who I'm do you vote for? I don't, it's yeah. the same thing. It's like I don't. But know that what also to works for Louis. You said like the people who are like oh, I can't. I just straight no. It's yeah. straight no. And there's, straight and there's <laughs> also people who want to fuck those people over. Yeah. So they go, yeah, well, watch this. I'm going to go buy a ticket. I'm going to go buy ten tickets and invite my friends because I hate your attitude towards these sort of things. So, like, the, fucking... nobody could have this, like, middle of the range. Like, he fucked up. He fucked up. No. But, but I'll give him a... Yeah, look. You know. Look. Let's give him a go. See what happens. No one's into giving a go. Yeah, this won't fly, this attitude. But... <laughs> no. Nah, nah. I don't know, man. All right. So, that I derailed that enough there because you said Louis. Is there anyone else where you've watched and you've just gone, that is... Bill Burr. Um, mind you, I haven't watched the whole of his latest one, Paper Tiger. But Paper I think Tiger. a few years ago... I watched one of his the other day. Um, oh, a couple of weeks ago, the black and white one. Oh yeah, yeah, I, I like that one. I didn't find that funny. Really, I like that one. I love Bill Burr. Huge yeah, fan. Yeah, yeah. Again, though, I don't know if I was in the mood, the yeah. right environment. There was something just not grabbing me about it. Mm. It could have been the black and white, mm. but that's what I like about him. He is different. Yeah. He he do, he likes those old school things. Yeah. Um, who Bill else? Is a good one. Well, you said Ricky earlier. Ricky makes me laugh so much. He's, Mate, his just, most recent one, yeah. Humanity or whatever it is. It's. Actually, do you know? Why? I don't think I've seen Humanity. I was I watched the one before that, which was wasn't that long ago either. Or was that Humanity? I think that was Humanity. The most recent one on Netflix. That like, well, how recent? a year or two oh, years yeah, ago. Yeah, that yeah. was unbelievable. Oh, his dog bit on that was uh, that actually made me cry. Yeah. Watching it on TV. That that was the only thing, stand up wise, I've seen in the last. I don't know. Again, you you've got like a, like it can be so diluted that you will actually just watch the ones that you know are going to be good because it's an hour of your time. Do you want to waste it on someone who got there maybe because they're in the right circles or in the right movements? Yeah. Or someone who is genuinely going to make you laugh. And I'm somebody, watch the person who makes me laugh. Yeah, and you want to know that their sense of humor, their style. Fits your sense of humor. 
Yeah. You I've got know? a very wide sense of humor. Like, I laugh at a lot of things. I do, but I know for a fact Ricky, Ricky Gervais, 99.9% of his his material will tickle me just yeah. the right way yeah. because I love that humor. I love... Just that almond latte yeah. sort of way. Just that slight tickle. Mm, it's got a good taste. Yeah, like, it's just that chuckle that, you know, the doctor from Herb from The Simpsons. So, ooh, 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 that <laughs> That's sort of, a deep ball. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, who, Sebastian Maniscalco, he makes... His stand-ups are fucking beautiful. Mate. Comedians in cars. I was like, yeah, true. Who? I was like, true. who is this that's, guy? That's what got and, and Joe actually a combination of, of, yeah. of Rogan and if you can if you can get on Jerry and Rogan, it's a nice who, balance. Who a lot of people who are on one or the other because mm. like Very Rogan's different. friends really aren't probably that style of that no. comedians in cars. They're more clean and sort of like yeah, um, you know that sort of thing. But Sebastian's managed to get his hands in both worlds. Where's he from again? He's from he's international. Isn't he? He's from overseas somewhere. No, he's he's American, um, but Italian background. Oh, yeah. yeah he's yeah. got the. Uh, what I meant is he has an accent. Oh, he's got that. Oh, yeah. I think is it Boston or? or uh, I think it's uh, no. We grew up in Chicago. Yeah, Chicago. Yeah, yeah. I feel like he had some. He had enough of an accent for me to be like, uh, the, maybe I'm thinking of a different guy. There was another guy in comedians where he was actually he was massive guy. internationally. Well, he's big internationally. Yeah, maybe it is him. And I was like, he tells, oh, us, shit. He tells that story about his dad, uh, who, who's yeah. very Italian. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, like, the there's no ma- like, there's no man cave. Maybe that's what it was. Ma- I was I'm ma- simplistic enough to go, oh, an Italian it's, story with yeah. a lot of Italian in it. it well, must, there's so, clearly in an there's Italian There's so many comedian. accents in, in America as well, mm, yeah, and especially with that Italian heritage and you know, your, your Bostons and your. Mm. Is it Boston? I think but, Boston's no, there got are the, more Irish. The Irish, American yeah. Irish. Um, he was one, though, that comedians in cars. Yeah. Tell me how. What about? Where do you sit on like? Uh, I mean, we spoke about it before. Eddie, Eddie Murphy. Where, where do I sit on it? Where do you sit on Raw and uh, <laughs> Delirious? Those are two. My brother. So, uh, so I'm the youngest of four, and my eldest brother is eight years older than me. Mm. You know, you're a big fan of Tim. Tim yeah, Timber. great yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Comes out with some zingers. Yeah. Um, he not not directly because I used to go behind like my mum's back to to get my hands on these sort of things. I watched Delirious and Raw when I was probably 11. Yeah, you probably didn't even understand half of what they're talking about. Yeah, I like the, the voices made me laugh. The yeah. like, Eddie! Like yeah. that sort of stuff really made me laugh. And then like you watch it a bit. Like I, I watched I watched one recently and yeah, it doesn't, it makes you laugh but it doesn't hold up in terms of like there are some things in society that are so drilled that it's like, nah, like you can't be saying these sort of things. Yep. And I get that. I get that. We should be, you know, I think I'm all for being progressive if it's, yeah. There, I think some people go too far, but that's a completely different, no, different realm. No, 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 I get what you're saying. But I think Eddie, well, he was only, he was like 20, 20, yeah, 21 or 22. Like, he was young when he got cast on SNL. I think he was 18, so yeah, young. he was young. That's and he's still young. like, he's like in his 50s now, he's not that old. Well, that's the thing. A lot of the best comedians say he could still come back and, and do comp and yeah, do well, stand-up. he is, so it's gonna be fucking well. I hope he does because I would love to uh, see apparently it. Apparently, he is, yeah. He well, said, are you saying there's a, a big enough movement out there that people are like, no, he doesn't, he shouldn't be able to with the stuff that he put out? No, nah, god, no, I, no, I think there's, I think there's more of a an interest from people to go, oh, like that's yeah. really exciting, but you know, I'm curious to see what Eddie's like in 2020. Compared to yeah. the stuff he could do back then, yeah. also a very wealthy Eddie Murphy. Like some people, that shit impacts. Like yeah. Seinfeld, it hasn't impacted because his comedy isn't well, tailored he's, he's to. He takes the piss out of him being a successful he's, Jewish man. Yeah, his comedy is based on his mind. Yeah, which is a is a Jewish yeah, neuro, neurotic which he can guy. Do until he's, yeah, Gervais came into money late, so yeah. he, all he knows is not having money. He so knows spoiled brats. Yeah, he knows yeah. spoiled brats, and he plays it up. Yeah, whereas. Yeah, Eddie. I don't know. No one knows. It's the Eddie's had money from a fool. Yeah, and he's been he's been retired. He hasn't done anything in like fifteen years. And when yeah. he did, it was like a shit kids movie. Well, then, like I agree with that. But then, I guess contrast is Chappelle. He's come back and done two specials lately, and they are still. He's still Chappelle. It's still even think, though he is yeah. so wealthy now, he's not detached at well, all. He, that, he still gets it. They say Chappelle was. So he went and lived in Africa for what was it like? 10 years? Yeah. It was like 8 to 10 years or something. That'll do it. They reckon that, like, the thing is, though, he never actually stopped. There's stories with Chappelle way before he came back on, like, with a speaker and a microphone in Central Park in yeah, New York. Yeah, I've heard that. Just doing stand-up, standing there, and people just being like, that's fucking Chappelle, man. Mm. What the... And then they're gathering around. Mm. There's something about doing those bare bones and, like, you're just out mm. there naked, essentially, by yourself, mm. not even with the protection of a club. Like you've got this club back and you're going, they're good enough for us to put on stage. You're just standing there. 
Just you. And mind you, he's Chappelle. Like you balls. Get, yeah, the but balls. But that's the thing. Because he's Chappelle, like, he doesn't have to do that, but he's done no, that. but he'll do it. And that's probably why he's still great. You know who I watched the other day? I'm curious to get your input here. So a bit before Eddie's time, probably, I don't know, 10 or so, actually probably like, yeah, 10 or so years before Eddie, um, Richard Pryor. Oh, yeah. Where do yeah. you sit on Pryor? Um, well, because of our age, obviously, I don't have the exposure other yeah. than the ones that that's out there. So I was exposed by Dad. Yeah, Dad. Yeah, introduced L- loved, me. Loved, loved him. Loved Ste- the stuff. Yeah, live on the Sunset Strip. Yeah, is quite possibly the the funniest thing. Yeah, ever. And the way they shot that, like people were still walking in. Yeah, like crazy. he's just like ushering people. Like sit the fuck down. Yeah, like, yeah seats down here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pull them up. Yeah, it was more of a. It, it wasn't a, like now that it's a show. It's like ladies and gentlemen, and then everyone applauses and they do an hour and then they get off. Yeah, that was like. I'm here, like, like I'm like before the doors are even opening. Like you sit down here, like, like he's ushering, he's he's yes. managing the, everything he's doing. Absolutely, the, the he came up. on stage early in the one I watched. Yeah, and there was people trying to get back, and they're like, he walks out, he's like, oh, this fucking. You know who did that recently? Now that I saw at the um, Melbourne Comedy Festival last year, who? Uh, James A. Caster. He's a he's a British comedian. I know. Yeah, I know. Oh, if you haven't seen him, yeah. If if anyone from Melbourne or whoever is listening. Mm. Do yourself a favor if he goes if he comes back to the comedy festival. Yeah, he is. Um, he he's hilarious. Okay, and he was when doors open at eight thirty. He was sitting on the stool. Oh bullshit! And but he had these sunnies on, and he had this. He, he was just playing music on his on his iPod, like music in the, the whole theater. And he kept coming back to this one song of um I can't remember. It's called um twenty seventeen. Yeah. Um, it's uh, Anthony Bennett. I don't know if you heard that song. I don't know. Maybe. It was about 2017 being... Um, so almost, that's that's like performance art It, right it is though, because yeah. he, kept, he kept playing other songs and he kept coming back to this one and did this little like, he would just like every time it would come on, he would like look out into the crowd and like... It was it became a joke in itself. Became, it, it was a joke in before itself. Before the show even started. But what was beautiful about it was the show itself was about how 2017 was the worst year of his life <laughs> so far, like or like the most fucked up or like the... Did you sort of, know this while he was playing the song? No, so no, it's hilarious. And it was it's beautiful almost, because at the was end of 2017 it, seemingly to you a metaphor for how goes 2017, and then the show begins and it's like piece of shit year. No, is that the, sort of the message. But the, the song, the lyrics in the song was about because Anthony Bennett went number one in the NBA draft and he was a complete bust. Uh-huh. And it was like I was just like Anthony Bennett, like um, uh, so like uh, I think it was about break up and all this kind of stuff. And then he did a whole hour of how 2017 was. And then it was just like, oh, that is, it's beautiful. It's yeah, perfect. Yeah. Whereas like, I think, I think British comedians in particular are fantastic mm. at doing an hour on something like, you know, for example, this one is one year of his life, which was terrible. Yeah. Whereas like, and this is just more my opinion, but then in your more American style is like, Five minutes of this, five minutes of uh, as you said know, before, Instagram, Gervais, five humanity. Of, like it's all tailored around yeah, humanity, and really. they bring it all back. And I think, I think, like I love, I love both for the record. I love both, mm. but I like there's something special in that. Like you can curate that whole thing, yeah, um, around that. I reckon that's awesome. So if we have, let's we'll wrap this up. What if there's one you could tell someone to go away and watch? What's something you just, you know, what I'm going to scratch that, scratch that. <laughs> Something Netflix. Let's go. Well, that was sort of the premise around us sitting down and chatting today. Something Netflix has put out that you go, that was really good. Go watch that. Rather than a classic. Rather than a classic. And I want something left of the field. Uh, something recently-ish. Mm, um, might have put you on the spot a little bit. A little bit, but one that keeps coming to my mind is not that I want to say it, but then it's like, no, but I credit where it was due. Ali Wong. Mm. Her stand up on Netflix. She's a she's, she's a got, big name too. Ali well, that's the thing. It's not left the field. No, nah, it's alright because mine's actually the one I was most impressed with isn't either. So that's fine. Ellie yeah. Wong. Apparently, that was really good. It was hilarious. Like yeah, yeah. And, and you know what? She has that female market wrapped up. Like my girlfriend who doesn't know anything about comedy. Like she's yeah. a funny girl, but <laughs> <laughs> and if you're track. listening, I love you. Yeah. Um, uh, she was like, you have to watch this special with me because I've, I watched it and I was wetting myself. I was like, all right. Like, oh, so she the amount you, of times put I hear, you onto it. Yeah, but I'd heard that too. But like, look, this is really bad. But when you hear it from that perspective, you're like, okay. like Yeah, there's something about being told what comedy to watch that's a little bit like, well, when a you, big commitment. I guess, yeah. And when you also... The, you, you question their sense of humor. Well, that that's true. Like, <laughs> yeah, of course. You learn a lot about a person by the stand-up they yep. recommend. So yep. I recommend everything. 
Mm. <laughs> but, but I watched it with her and it was like, she is very, very funny. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But that, again, and that was again, a surprise packet. Well, it no, well, it, it was. It was, but it wasn't because mm. she is big and she, there's a reason she's big because she's great at it. Yeah. She's great at stand up and she's a funny actor as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but that, I guess that's my one but because, as I said earlier, though, I don't watch that much. No. See, I think the one I'm going to, we've put out there the ones we think are iconic and mm. great, but if we're going ones that we were surprised by, I honestly didn't know Adam Sandler to be a stand up. Oh, okay. Right? I, I yeah. knew him. I. Was a f- I'm, a, I'm an Adam Sandler fan. We grew we grew say. up. We were in. We grew up when Happy Gilmore, Billy Madison, yeah. uh, Big Daddy. We were right in there. Big Daddy was right huge in there. for me. Right when we were, our brains were just developing. Like, so we, he's we, naturally going to be in there. And I, I can yeah. watch an Adam Sandler movie. People yeah. slam it. I watch. I the watch most reason, Adam the Sandler. The only reason movies. I've ever slammed is re- when I say recent, like dec- last decade, is because he has been paid a lot of money from Netflix to create these movies and. They're more. They are more for your younger audience. Like, yeah. you, like, like they're more children's movies. There's, and there's reason, no. There's nothing wrong with that. There's a reason why we liked him as kids. His humor plays to a kid. It's yeah. very childish. Yeah, it is. It's, yeah. it's very uh, innocent and, and mm. simple. Mm. Like he's he's a simple character. Yeah. Did you watch his special? I haven't. Is this new? It's the certified. Was it called Certified Fresh or something or Hundred Percent Fresh? And that's the new like this it's, year or last year? Uh, last year, maybe the year before. Oh, okay. I haven't seen it. Mind blowing. His really? ability. You know what I? Because this isn't my thing, really. Yeah. But musical stand-up comedy. Did he? He mate. Yeah. Virtually the whole thing revolves around songs. And there was there was the whole Adam Sandler was kind of known for um, his songs that he did. Oh, true. Yeah, he had some great balance. I, in I'm trying. Yeah, I'm trying. Yeah. The one in Billy Madison stands out where um, Veronica Vaughn. When punches yeah. him in the pool, and then it- <laughs> yeah, and there was that like whole strap on a dildo, and I'll give you head Ooh. at a medium pace. Remember that one? Do you remember <laughs> no, medium I don't pace? Remember that yeah, one. medium no. pace was a great song. They they were things that he was famous for. You should medium listen. pace is a good. If anyone one. hasn't listened to that, go listen to Medium yeah. Pace by Adam Sandler. Or had Medium Pace. It's- well, that too. Not bad. So Adam Sandler. <laughs> Adam Sandler purely based on the fact that it was different. It was. Okay. But that's, was, that's ballsy that he went different too because he's Adam Sandler. You would think you'd play it safe like Alan did. There's um, heaps going on. Heaps going on. In, yeah, more. <laughs> but that's great. Musical. Music. That's Music. Cool. Something that's different. That's like Bo, Bo Burnham who's, um, who's huge now. I don't even know if he's got Netflix. He probably does, but like he has a huge I have no base. idea who that is. Um, oh, you'd, you'd have to look just him to up. stare like, but but he but he he brings in entertainment as well, so mm. like you know piano and and different sort of music and stuff like that. Um, not always my cup of tea, but I, I like a traditional man with a mic. Well, you got to think Steve Martin. That was probably my first oh. and only experience to music being tied yeah. in with comedy was yeah. Steve Martin with a banjo. Yeah, and even he tours now with Steve Martin, Martin with Shaw. a banjo. Steve Martin with a banjo is iconic. Yeah. Some would say. And like the arrow yeah. on the head, like fucking simple shit. Yeah. Jim but Carey. there is, there's something where you can go and like, I watched this and I didn't realize I liked musical comedy. Like when I say musical comedy, I'm, I'm struggling for the correct term, but music mixed with stand up mm. is, it's interesting. It's different. There's songs, yeah. there's like, there's a story that they're telling through music to give it a pace, which yeah. I was like, that is, that's really Every time I've seen that live, I've always thought, this is really clever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, but you're I'm almost not. too much in awe to really <laughs> exactly. To I'm more impressed than laughing, <laughs> yeah. and for me, I want to laugh when I go see stand up. Like that's the mm-hmm. only like that's for me. Like you know, like your um, your Hannah Gatsby, for example. Like mm. did it, like uh, I I look I I laughed and cried in whilst watching that for the first time, mm. and I went in with it with a with a bit of a negative mindset. Like oh, like I've heard all this. I stuff I haven't about watched it because I think I've got the similar mindset. Um, and yeah, like at the end of the, like I don't know what you would call it. I don't like. I know there's there's probably a lot of people out there who who are big fans of it, and that's fine. But I'm I wasn't. I well I I didn't. Th- I thought it was a great show, mm. but I just wouldn't put it in a stand up comedy. I'm I'm really excited to hear what some people might give feedback on some of the things we've said. Like on that. Well, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to be, I'm trying to be honest and I'm not trying no, to, because you know how like some people will go deliberately the other way and be like, just to, oh, just what, to be what, different. What? No. Well, not just to be different, but to, to, <clears throat> to, to play on that audience because they're trying to build their own audience. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to be empathetic, but honest at the same time. And yeah. just for me, it's like, I like, I, as I said, I, I teared up a couple of times. It's it actually really sad, and, mm. but really beautiful. But for me, it just wasn't the stand. Like I, like, there's so many political comedians out there now. Like, 
forget about that for a sec. There's like everyone, it's particularly particularly in Australia. I reckon ninety five percent of Australian comedians are like talking shit about the government, blah blah blah, which is fine. Do do what you want. Yeah. But for me, like my my style. And whilst I'm still developing my style, I don't really know. Mm. It's mine's more silly, and it's more about like family and like like things that happen in your everyday life. Because I because I for one want to forget about everything you see for the to 24 hours a day on mm. Facebook or on Instagram. Like I I want to get away from that. So then I want to cater to that to people who want to get away from it. Yeah, there's I enough there's enough shit online to make you yeah to make you a bit sad. Almost. Oh, like, you don't need that yeah. in your stand-up. You and I were talking about it the other yeah. week in Australia with the bushfires. And what, I think that's what we were talking about. Yeah. And you're like, I just need to get away from it. Mm. Like, I am I'm, I'm, I actually had to throw my phone away. Yeah. Kobe was, Bryant recently. Kobe Bryant, had yeah. To, like, that really hit me hard. Like Because you get in a hole. You get in a hole. You do. And you can just wallow in that self I, sort of... Yeah. I tend to think the same with political comedy. Like, yes, okay, it's fucked mm. at the moment. Mm. But I don't need every American comedian talking to me about Donald Trump. Not to mention, you're going to date your shit by doing it because, like, come on, everyone's doing you it. And also, it. Yeah. like, this isn't going to be relevant forever. Let's yeah. talk about... That's why I love Seinfeld. Seinfeld deliberately doesn't. Yes, yeah. And his shit is relevant yeah. forever. forever. And you can... you can doesn't matter what mood you're in. You'll always appreciate it. Yeah. So I'm a little bit... I get what you're saying. Like, yeah. we just want to escape it. Yeah. That, so Netflix is doing a, 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 an honourable thing by giving us so much of it. Yeah. At least we've got options. Well, that that, that is true, <laughs> that and they true. they give the ones that will get a bit of backlash. Like uh, I know Tom Skura got in a lot of trouble for his last one. <laughs> he basically hung shit on, I think it was Tennessee or I don't know what an American state where he basically was like, let's build a wall around. Yeah, around that. but that's what I like about what Netflix is doing. They don't give notes. They don't fucking tell a comedian what they can no. and can't say. Netflix almost welcomes the backlash. Like, yeah, yeah where, get a where is you know, you know who, it's all right. You know who is too censored now, which is very dangerous <laughs> for how big they are. YouTube. Mm. They they will pull shit that they don't believe is like their sort of. Well, you can report things. Well, you can you can, and I'm and, and I'm I hope sure that, people do it. Yeah, oh, man, people have Absolutely. nothing better to do mm. than to report things. If you report something and it's not like a, a live murder, you're an asshole. Yeah, like you're not gonna get any like nothing's gonna progress as a society if if you see something you don't like and you go oh report instead of I don't know like have a say have make a say it, have a comment. That's all right. Yeah. Like you can comment if you don't like something. That's yeah. fine. Constructive. Don't fucking have it taken down. No. You no, see that what on does Instagram. That, do? that just you see builds it on more every time. Like let's think of it from like a, a terrorist point of view. Mm. Every time the the leader or, or or a group gets taken down, what happens? Another one pops yeah, up. Yeah, they pop up. In you the like let like be grown ups and talk about it. Like people want to be progressive. Yeah. And the ones who are deliberately shocking, that's their shtick. Like yeah. whatever. Yeah. But. Just like I don't know, I don't even know where, we, where I'm really going with know, this. I don't know. I don't know. We just we got off onto a spin after talking about Netflix, not, yeah. not necessarily yeah. censoring, and then others people, yeah. other people YouTube, do censor. They censor too much. Yeah. Come on. But um, and that and that could if that goes too far down one way, who knows? Another YouTube esque thing will pop up where they go, you can do and say whatever you want. Yeah. And that will like that will be just a shitstorm. So YouTube should allow these things to happen, and just. You know, sure, you don't have to pay advertising for it, but don't pull it down. No, unless it's unless it's actually committing a crime. Mm. And I know hate speech; that's a very fine line. Oh, and who am I to that. decide what is and isn't? Mate, I, I we've mean, recorded this podcast. I don't even know what we could get bloody dragged across the coals for. for saying. Well, I, think I don't think we've said yeah. anything wrong. Yeah, mind yeah. you. And this show is brought to you by <laughs> yeah, Chicky Leprechaun Productions. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so take it up with them. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's it's fucking hard. I wouldn't want to be a stand up. Put it that way. And mm. when you're back on stage next, good luck with it. I hope. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, who knows? I might do a little set next year. A little open. Well, mic. What do you mean next year? It's only January. N- next year. No, next to you. Yeah, sorry, I got a little bit oh, bogan there. We could, a, we could do a duo, see if that works out. Oh, fuck, maybe people come out. Maybe someone listening is like, I'll come give you a little support. I'll tell you what, it'd be a lot it's easier a lot doing it with someone else, but then there's a lot more organising with someone else. If they listen to this. If anyone knows anything about relying well, on others, it's yeah. you and you're like, I don't, you wouldn't like it. Nah, it'd be stressful. Nah, that's why podcasts are good if you're doing it just by yourself. Oh, we're not trying to please anyone but ourselves at this point, are we? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, no, yeah. I care what you think, the listener. <laughs> yeah to an extent I don't care what you think about my coffee order but otherwise yeah everything else is important who knows here, maybe it? they they care so much about what you get that 
arm and lattes might like start skyrocketing. That's exactly right. They might. They yeah. might. Or a long black. Yeah. Speaking of, you want to go get one? Well, let's do it, mate. All right, let's wrap this up, mate. Thank you very much thank, thank for stopping you, by and talking a little comedy. Yeah. Have you back sometime? You keen to come back? Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. this is great. Thank you very much, Benny. Thank you. <laughs>